we try to incorporate here our idea uh, of climate uh, resilient, uh, sustainable agriculture. In the tough, we put our three main approaches. Um, and here, uh, the pillars that we consider the pillars of climate resilient, sustainable agriculture. The approach is the one that uh, the other uh, I, I presented in the other diagram. The first one is the, co the, 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 the conduction of a participatory appraisal at community level to see, to identify local problems and local potentialities. The second one is the whole discussion about identification, documentation, tests, and diffusion of local knowledge uh, and, and practice, and also practice that we can bring from the outside. And the third one is the whole discussion about uh, the importance to build this bridge between local and traditional knowledge. Okay, we have then three approaches and the pillars, the seven pillars that we think is, is the base to build climate resilient sustainable agriculture. The first one is gender equity and women's rights. The second uh, one is related with soil, soil conservation, soil, improve, soil improvement. The third one is uh, sustainable water management. It's not possible to, to do agriculture without water. And uh, agrobiodiversity preservation is the next one. Livelihood di di diversification, processing and access to market and support farmers organization is the last one. Let's go one by one. Gender equity and women's rights. We think that because women are responsible for most of the, the, the products that agriculture, the smallholder farmers produce today, uh, improving uh, women's access and control over productive resources, it means land, but also forest and many other things, is central uh, to ensure uh, uh, sustainability and to ensure uh, climate uh, resilient sustainable agriculture. And also grouping uh, collective actions among uh, women farmers are essential. Usually, although they are responsible for most of the food that we produce and consume in the world, they are invis invisible. They are invisible for their own uh, uh, family, they are invisible for their own community, for local public uh, uh, policy makers and national policy makers. And Another issue is related with the increasing, uh, increasing women's co uh, contribution to household income through training in financial uh, literacy and uh, marketing skills. Uh, we have many examples of uh, the result of a training like that. They started, uh, after training, they started to understand how to deal with the market and how to deal with the finance, how to deal with money. And this is quite, quite important for their on the situation inside the community and inside the family. Uh, and also optimizing women's time spent on care and reproductive work. Usually uh, uh, women de develop a lot, a, lot, a lot of activities on care uh, that are not Paid and paid and paid care, something that we need to deal with. Um, soil conservation, soil is central uh, uh, on sustainable agriculture. Without soil, uh, it's more other farmers. Uh, can, without good soil, it's more other farmers cannot produce. Uh, most of soils that our farmers are working with, the farmers that actually aid and partners uh, uh, are working with. Uh, they are, well, let's say, very marginal soils because farmers, they have not a, 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 such a huge area and they need to use the small piece of land they have very intensively. And it means in many uh, 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 conditions in Latin America, Africa, and Asia, uh, over exploitation of soil over grazing uh, and because of that most of the soils that our farmers work with they are poor uh, from origin but after overgrazing, over exploitation it gets poorest and 
the organic matter content on the soil usually are quite low. Most of them are acid soils uh, with uh, very uh, hard uh, uh, lack of structure of the soil. Uh, the water can have difficulties to penetrate because of the lack of the mat organic material and also because of compactation. Uh, because of that, it's essential to work with soils. And soil, soil is the basic if you want, want to have a more a sustainable production system. And then to cover soil and to protect it against the sunlight is essential. Uh, it's also essential to prevent soil erosion uh, and to enhance the dynamic of organic matter on the soil. Organic matter is important because it uh, helps to build the structure of the soil, to make the soil more, uh, 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 to, to, to facilitate the penetration of water, to facilitate the penetration of air, and also to facilitate the, the movements of uh, organisms that make the soil a living, a living uh, uh, organism, make the soil a living, a living uh, uh, element. Uh, Erosion control is erosion control is also essential. Uh, we have already lots of problems with erosion. Uh, most of farmers that we work with, they have already lost that first layer of the soil. Uh, the first layer is the richest part of the soil, and because most of our farmers uh, they have no condition to cover the soil or the practice like terraces and other things. They are not implementing it. Uh, and they are in areas that are prone to, to storms and other things and also drought. Uh, they lose this, uh, most of, the, of our farmers, uh, 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 soil of our farmers. They don't have this first layer of soil anymore. Uh, we need to, uh, to, to, to start to seriously discuss about uh, uh, control uh, uh, of soil erosion by terraces, and there are a lot of other techniques. Uh, and trees, the introduction of trees can help us a lot to improve the, the, the erosion control of the soil. And we need to consider that in a context of climate change, storms are going to be more uh, common and more intense. Uh, droughts are going to be also more common and more intense. We need to be prepared. Our systems need to be prepared to receive one amount of water that is not the, the system are not receiving today. And we need to be prepared for that. Uh, it's also important to reduce the dependency of uh, 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 agrochemicals. And there are several alternatives that you can use. In a small scale, you can use composting, for instance. If you think about uh, a, a large scale, in a more uh, a large scale, we can think about uh, green manure. Mixed cropping is uh, 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 essential because in a context of climate change, uh, if you put uh, several uh, uh, plants in the same area, it uh, ensures that at least part of it is going to survive in a context of flood or in a context of drought. We can mix several different plants, and you can use plants that has characteristics that can help them to survive to different, uh, many different uh, climate conditions. Um, it also mixed cropping also protect the soil. Mulch that means uh, a cover of the soil with a layer of organic material to protect the soil against. Uh, uh, rain and to protect the soil against erosion and also part of it is going to be transformed into organic matter. Crop rotation, uh, natural control of pests and diseases uh, uh, are also quite important. And to reduce the dependency of agrochemicals, even uh, uh, mainly pesticides, uh, because they are quite dangerous, our farmers uh, usually they don't know uh, uh, how to use it. And even if they know how to use it, it's quite dangerous to use it for the environment and for the farmer's health. They are going to be the first ones that are going to be affected by it. Uh, 
And also, it's important to reduce the dependency of external seeds and chemical fertilizers because it, they are expensive, and most of them, most of seeds, for instance, are not adapted to the conditions that our farmers are uh, uh, having. Uh, in the case of chemical fertilizer, we have several alternatives that we can develop uh, because uh, chemical fertilizers, they are also expensive and it increases the dependence of farmers. Usually they need to sell something to buy chemical fertilizer or to take some loans from banks to be able to buy chemical fertilizer. In, in the context of climate change, it can increase their risks. Um, but of course, uh, the idea here is not to propose changes, radical changes, from one day to another, because it's not possible. And uh, as we presented there in our transition process uh, discussion, every step needs to be well planned, and small steps need to be taken uh, to design a, a, a more sustainable system. And then, uh, chemical fertilizers, for instance, uh, usually are the last thing that farmers uh, manage to get rid of. Usually they say that it's quite easy to avoid to use pesticides. Pesticide is not really a, a, a problem when they start a transition process, usually. But uh, chemical, fertilizer, uh, chemical fertilizer, yes, it is a, a challenge to get rid of. And the idea is not to stop to use it. The idea is to design a process, a transition process, that day by day you are going to improve the organic matter content, you are going to improve the, your soil condition, and uh, in the long run, you can get rid of chemical fertilizer or you can start to use less of it. Uh, it's important also to say something about uh, chemical fertilizer and organic matter. In our soils, in the soils that uh, uh, farmers that we work with, uh, the, the, the soils that farmers that I work with, has, uh, they have access, uh, they are really poor and the, uh, the organic matter content is quite low. Uh, because uh, they, are, they are poor and because most of them are old, and they lose the